Welcome in uh, engineering materials and metallurgy. Today we will discussing about the tempering topic. So what is the tempering treatment and what is the need of the tempering that we will see. So first is the necessity of the tempering. So during hardening, the outer envelope of component will undergo the cooling process immediately compared to the core of the material. So the outer envelope converts into hard phase and due to martensitic formation, but the core remains soft due to the retained austenite. So the outer envelope is in constant contracted due to the cooling, whereas the core remains expansion state. Thus, the residual stresses will be produced on the component. So it serves intensity of crack will be formed on the surface. So the hardened component possesses some residual stresses and hence it should not be used directly in any application without removing the internal stresses. Hence, hence tempering is to be performed to remove the residual stress. So simply what is the necessity of temp tempering is nothing but whenever component A is going to cool or hardening process is carried out, then there will be a transformation phase of the austenite into the martensite. But here, uh, the two uh, things happen in hardening. That is a, a core uh, portion has a, some expansion state and uh, envelope portion or outer portion has a hard phase. So there will be the uh, stress development between the two surfaces, that is the core surface and outer surfaces. And that stress will causes the failure of the component during working condition. So avoid that, there should be a, another heat treatment or some what heating is to be provided so that the retained austenite should be removed and the desired properties of the materials are going to achieve. Hence, tempering is to be performed to remove the residual stresses. Next, tempering. So, tempering is generally applicable for the steel with the percentage of carbon equal to 0 to 0.4 percent. The objectives of tempering are as follows. So, to relieve or remove the internal stresses produced during the hardening, then it will uh, tempering reduce the hardness of the material or steel. Then uh, tempering increases the ductility and toughness of the steel. Then uh, tempering stabilizes the structure of steel. Then it eliminates or it will uh, remove or reduce the retain austenite from the steel after uh, martensitic transformation. Uh, the process of tempering is the first step is the heating. So the hardened component is heated from 100 degrees Celsius to 700 degrees Celsius temperature. Then holding at the temperature for one to two hours period of the time, that is a constant temperature. Then cooling to air cooling, that is a normalizing to the room temperature so that the desired properties are achieved. Then types of the tempering, there are three types of the tempering low temperature tempering that is a 100 to 200 degrees celsius range medium temperature tempering that is a 200 to 500 degrees celsius range third is a high temperature tempering that is 500 to 700 degrees celsius temperature range so the types of temperings are low temperature tempering so range is the 100 to 200 degrees celsius so here in a low temperature tempering at 200 degrees Celsius temperature, martensite will get transformed into the low carbon martensite and carbide, carbon carbide. So the structure appears dark with common itching reagents like nitrile and pickerel due to the separation of the carbon carbide. 
So no appreciable change in the return of stenate occurs. Brittleness reduces because of the decrease in the internal stresses. Then excellent wear resistance. The application of low temperature tempering is the cutting and measuring tools, manufacturing of the cutting and measuring tools. So this is the low temperature tempering. Second one is a medium temperature tempering. That is the range of the temperature is uh, 200 to 500 degrees Celsius. So here retain austenite may get converted into the bainite or decomposes to the carbide and martensite. So freshly formed martensite and carbide also decomposes to cementite and ferrite. The microstructure consists of a fine cementite and this microstructure with fine cementite is called as a prosite. So hardness decreases with increase in the temperature or tempering temperature in case of medium temperature tempering. Then toughness and ductility increases for the steel. Then it produces maximum elastic properties into the steel. So the application of medium temperature tempering after that, that component can be applicable for the making of the coils and leaves, springs used in the suspension system. Next third is the high temperature tempering. Here temperature range is of 500 to 700 degrees Celsius. So there will be no change in the microstructure except coarsening of cementite particle. So coarsening results in slight decreasing the hardness and toughness of the steel. The applications are connecting rods and shafts as well as gears. So after high temperature tempering, the components can be applicable for the manufacturing of the connecting rods, shafts and gears. So these are the types of the tempering, low temperature tempering, medium temperature tempering and high temperature tempering. Next is the effect of alloying elements on tempering. So when for alloy steel containing tungsten, chromium, molybdenum, vanadium, vanadium, etc. Hardness rises during tempering, that is a secondary hardening. So the effect of alloying element on tempering, so the these elements will going to increase the hardness of the alloy steel. This is due to the separation of very hard complex alloy carbide from martensite. Such steel retains their hardness up to 600 degrees Celsius in contrast to plain carbon steel, which softens the badly above 300 degrees Celsius temperature. Then high resistance to tempering makes alloy steel suitable for use above 600 degrees Celsius. Then temper colors. So the tempering can be judged by temper colors, which appears on the bright red surface and experienced eyes are guided by these colors while heating materials for tempering. The colors are formed because of the formation of oxide layer film, which is the function of oxide film thickness. Oxide film thickness depends upon the tempering temperature and holding time. As the thickness increases, color changes from light straw to gray. So these are the tempering colors. So the various tempering colors are for the tempering temperature and temper colors are shown in the uh, table below. 220 degrees Celsius, straw yellow is the color. For 240 degree light brown, for 270 degree Celsius brown, for 285 degree purple, for 295 dark blue, for 310 light blue, then gray, then gray purple, then gray blue and dull gray for 400 degree Celsius temperature. The next is the temper embrittlement. So the alloy steel containing the nickel, manganese, chromium, phosphorus, SB, sanatin, AR, when cooled slowly or hold for a prolonged period within the specified temperature range between 350 and 500 degrees Celsius, it becomes brittle and slow, show mark decrease in toughness. This phenomenon is known as the temper brittleness or 
then for embrittlement higher the cooling rate lower the degree of embrittlement thus it can be eliminated by quenching in oil or water the addition of molybdenum titanium zirconia also eliminates embrittlement the next is a sub zero heat treatment so it is employed for high carbon and high alloy steel used for making tools measuring gauges bearings and components requ requiring high impact and fatigue strength coupled with dimensionally stability the objective to eliminate retain austenite the process of sub zero treatment includes cooling hardened steel to a sub zero temperature which is lower than the martensite temperature mf temperature for the most of the steel lies between minus 30 degree to minus 70 degree so this is the sub zero temperature range stresses developed stresses are developed and hence should be tempered in immediately so sub zero treatment should be performed immediately after hardening treatment the cooling media for sub heat treatment is a mechanical refrigeration unit dry ice liquid nitrogen etc so thank you for watching sub zero heat treatment process